While preparing for the D-Day invasion, the Allies realized that they needed to capture the bridges on the road from Normandy to Paris, along with other strategic targets, before the landings. Otherwise, they'd risk getting trapped on the beaches. But how could they get men behind enemy lines without being detected? The answer was gliders, silent flying machines that could carry up to 12 men, or even a jeep. The plan was to tow them across the English Channel with C-47 planes in the early morning hours before the landings. When they reached the drop zone, their tow ropes would be cut, and then the pilots would have only three minutes to land the gliders. But these gliders were made of mostly wood and fabric, and they were to land in total darkness. The mission was so dangerous, in fact, that the head of airborne operations for D-Day predicted in a letter to General Eisenhower that 70% of the gliders would be lost, and up to half the men. Just how dangerous these planes were is something that can be tested today using state-of-the-art engineering technology. Dassault Systems is a French engineering company that can digitally model vehicles in such detail that you could test what could go wrong before anything does. Blueprints become three-dimensional and function in ways that simulate real-world situations. Cars can be crashed without crashing. The laws of physics can be applied inside the mainframe. But getting a working, high-tech model from the poorly preserved World War II-era blueprints was impossible. As soon as we zoom in, we, we cannot read the, all the dimensions. It would be quite impossible. Okay. So the Dassault engineers came to the Fagan Fighters World War II Museum in Granite Falls, Minnesota, to use laser technology to measure this meticulously restored glider. More than two billion measurements are recorded from different angles to create one precise digital replica of this vintage plane. You can turn around, you can, you can zoom in, zoom out. Go inside the cockpit. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. There it yeah. is. Yeah. The Dassault team can now launch the wood and fabric glider, but this time in the world of virtual reality. Now you can control through the joystick, and we can see when you move on the left to the right. While this may look a bit like a video game, the physics required to fly the glider are very real and built into the software. Getting into the details is very important for me because you can you can't explain things if you don't have the details. Temperature, airspeed, and thermodynamics accurately come into play. We can simulate crashes, or we can also test what is the reaction force from the landings, what is the effect on the structure, on the people. Really difficult to find a place to land, actually. Even in the world of virtual reality, the landing is a harrowing feat. <laughs> Yeah, not so easy to do. <laughs> the first reaction I had is to say I will never go inside one with, which is flying because it's so dangerous. On the morning of D-Day, the glider operations went better than expected, with less loss of life than predicted. These were some of the very first soldiers to touch French soil on D-Day, and they played an essential role in the success of the operation.